Excellence, Monsieur le Président, en exercice de l'Union africaine et président de Démocratique République, République démocratique du Congo, Excellencies, heads of state and government, uh, co convenience my brothers Patrick and uh, Aki, fantastic work, thank you for having us. Uh, Kristalina, friend and colleague, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to be able to join the African Adaptation Acceleration Summit. Africa's vulnerability to climate change is undoing much had one economic progress and development. The latest report by the Global Center for Adaptation, to which WTO was happy to contribute, projects that climate change will cause a 2 to 4% annual loss in GDP in Africa by 2040. Those who will suffer are poor people, women, the marginalized population. They'll bear the worst of it. Adaptation for Africa must be a priority for the international community. As we all know and we've said, this region contributes the least to emissions, but suffers the most. Climate finance for Africa to meet adaptation costs must be ramped up. Africa already faces seven to $15 billion annually of adaptation costs. By 2050, it will be in the region of 50 billion annually. We also need to put in place trade policies to cushion against and adapt to the negative impacts of climate change. Trade is part of the solution. Trade is designed to help countries to diversify and adapt and be resilient. Let me illustrate. First, the climate threat to food security will be paramount for Africa. Yet trade can provide a response in many ways. When a country faces a shock from an extreme weather event, Trade cushions the volatility of food markets by providing a vital flow of supplies to affected regions. Trade also helps economic diversification and productivity, provides access to inputs needed for climate resilient agriculture, and there's a broader gain from trade which reduces vulnerabilities by creating jobs and raising incomes. We also know that with action on agricultural tariffs, joined by trade facilitating measures, we could save 35 million people from suffering from climate-induced hunger, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. Second, the WTO can also help lower barriers to trade for goods, services, and technologies that are essential for adaptation. Lowering trade barriers helps to stretch each dollar of adaptation finance further. This makes it more affordable to invest in cutting-edge technologies for addressing risks from sea level rise, drought, extreme weather events, and floods. To give an example, WTO data show that import tariffs levied on goods relevant to adaptation average about 10% in many African countries, with tariffs as high as 50% in some countries. Third, we need to make more and better directed climate finance for Africa. I said this before. The $100 billion promise must be made real to avoid a trust deficit. For Africa to be able to make supply chains resilient, we need a global effort to climate-proof the region's transport and other key trade-related infrastructure. Greater synergies between Aid for Trade, a program which the WTO coordinates with other international organizations, and climate finance programs are required. Currently, climate-focused programs represent only around one-third of overall aid for trade. We need to ramp this up, and we should also consider the role that the private sector can play in mobilizing funding. Just last week, I hosted Trade for Climate Dialogues with major business leaders, and their message to COP26 was that trade must and can support climate adaptation. The blueprint for adaptation actions for the African continent set out in the recently launched GCA report is vitally important, and trade and the WTO can help realize these goals. Let me end by saying that right after COP26, we have the WTO's 12th ministerial conference. WTO members are working on various initiatives to promote the role of trade in addressing climate change and other environmental challenges. WTO stands ready to continue working with Africa to make trade a force for climate adaptation. Thank you.